I'm sure everyone knows about JE Mains, but did you know that there is a JE Paper 2 for Architecture and Planning? If you're dreaming of studying architecture at SPAs or NITs or any other national level institution, then this is the entrance exam that can get you there. In this video, we are going to discuss how JE Paper 2 works, the eligibility criteria, the exam schedule, pattern and most importantly, the allotment processes, JOSA and CSAP. If you have attempted JE Paper 2 this year and are planning to take another shot at BRC in the next year, watch till the end of the video for tips on how to prepare for it. Hit that like button, subscribe and share this video with a friend who needs it and let's get started. Hi all, this is Nanda from Think Institute of Design. JE Main Paper 2 is the national level entrance exam for architecture and planning to 17 institutions consisting of 10 NITs, 4 CFTIs and the 3 SPAs, Delhi, Bhopal and Vijayawada, with a total number of 950 plus seats available at these institutions. J Paper 2 has two options, Paper 2A for BR and Paper 2B for B Planning. You can either choose to write one or both the exams. Like JE means both the exams are conducted in two sessions and only your best score out of the two will be considered. Generally, the session one exams come in Jan and session two in April and the final results are expected by May. So if you have appeared in both sessions, your final NTS score will be the highest out of the two. Based on the final scores, the rank list will be published as All India and Category ranks and seats are allotted through JOSA allotment rounds. Usually, the application form for JEB ARC opens by December and is completely online through the JE portal www.jemain.nta.nic.in and also this is the website where you will get all the updates regarding JE examinations. You can check your eligibility, you can download the information bulletin and syllabus. That takes us to the eligibility criteria. For appearing in the JE Main, there is no age limit. Those who have passed or are appearing for the class 12th or equivalent exams can appear in JE. However, when it comes to the allotments, you are required to fulfill the age criteria and requirements of the institute that you are taking admission in. When you register for the exam, there is another important aspect called the State Code of Eligibility which refers to the code of the state from where the candidate has passed class 12th or the equivalent exam. For example, if a candidate appears for class 12th from an institution in Rajasthan and is a native of Kerala, then the candidate's state code of eligibility will be Rajasthan and not Kerala. By the way, if you are aiming for IITs, yes, IITs also do provide BR course. IIT Varanasi, Karagpur and IIT Roorke do offer BR. But for that, there are a few more steps. You need to first qualify the JE Paper 1 and then write the JE Advanced and then qualify a separate test called the AAT or Architecture Aptitude Test. The seat allotments will be happening based on your All India ranks in the JE Advanced. Now let's talk about the JE Paper 2 exam pattern. The BIAC paper has two types of test. There is a computer based test for mathematics and aptitude and a drawing test in obviously pen and paper mode where you will be provided with drawing booklet. While for the B planning, the drawing test is replaced with more planning based multiple choice questions. Both these exams are of 3 hour duration. And here's a tip, if you appear for both the exams together, you get an additional 30 minutes time to complete it. Understanding the paper pattern and marking scheme is crucial if you want to score well and get a top rank and that's exactly how we prepare you at Think Institute of Design to give your best in the JE paper too. So let's look at the exam pattern of JE BR. As I said earlier, paper 2A for BRC is a 3 hour paper out of 400 marks. The paper has 3 parts. Part 1 Mathematics consisting of 20 MCQs, 5 NAT questions. Then part 2 is Aptitude test consisting of 50 MCQs and part 3 is a drawing test consisting of 2 drawing questions. In part 1 and part 2, you are awarded 4 marks each for a 
correct answer and minus 1 mark for each wrong answer. For B planning, paper 2B, the drawing test is replaced with planning based aptitude questions. So this is how the exam pattern is and if you want us to do a video on the J exam syllabus, do let us know below in the comments. Now let's talk about how the JEBR results get published. After each exam session, the first step towards a result announcement is the publishing of provisional answer key in the official website. So you get a chance to challenge the answer key if you feel that any of the answers are wrong or soon within a week's time the final answer key gets published. So shortly after that in almost a day's time the JBR results also get published. So here is something that most students hate, J results get published only as percentile. So many students get confused between percentile and percentage. So let's uh, bring a little bit clarity to that first. So imagine if you are in a race with 100 people, when the race ends you find out you finished ahead of 90 people. So that means you are in the 90th percentile and you did better than 90 percentage of the group. So in simple words, percentile tells you how you did compared to others. So it's not the same as score out of 100, it is basically how you performed compared to everyone who appeared for the exam. So after the session 2, the result that gets published will be your final results. So including your scores of both the attempts, your final NTA score, the rank you secured in JE paper 2, all that will be included. So it is based on this All India and category wise rank that the seats get allotted. You might have heard about JOSA and CSAB allotments. So let me give you a bit more clarity about what they actually are. JOSA stands for Joint Seat Allotment Authority, which is the official counselling body for admissions to NITs, IITs, SPAs and GFTIs. JOSA will be conducting multiple rounds of allotments and will be assigning seats based on your GE rank, your category, your preferences and seat availability. So now what is CSAB? CSAP stands for Central Seat Allocation Board which is like a backup or a special round of counselling after the JOSA rounds. So basically for those who did not get allotted or missed the JOSA allotments. So to get allotted through JOSA, there is an eligibility that you must meet. You must score at least 75% in class 12th or be in the top 20 percentile of your class 12 boards. The top 20 percentile cutoff mark of each board will be published by JOSA on the official website. To take part in the JOSA counselling process, you have to first register, fill your choices and upload documents on the JOSA portal www.josa.nic.in. So this is the website where all your doubts regarding the allotment rounds can get cleared. If not, you can always reach out to us below in the comments or in our WhatsApp community for BIAC aspirants. So the community link is also available in the descriptions below. So JOSA generally conducts one or two mock rounds of allotments so you get an idea about the campus you can try for based on your rank. So you can check the previous year's opening and closing ranks available on the JOSA website for making your college preference list. So after the mock rounds, generally five to six rounds of allotments are conducted. So if you want to know about the eligibility criteria of these counselling bodies, do let us know below in the comments. So those who don't get allotted in these rounds of JOSA can participate in the CSAB allotment rounds where the unfilled seats will be allotted through based on your JE ranks. For those of you preparing for JE BIAC in the coming year, here are 5 tips that can help you make your preparation more efficient. First is understand the syllabus and plan strategically. Have a clear understanding of the syllabus and create a clear plan of which areas you are going to concentrate on. So prioritize the topics based on your strengths and also review previous year papers to identify important areas. Tip 2 is mock tests are a must. Solving previous year paper is helpful but not enough. Regular mock test with time bound practice is a must. Be it the aptitude or the drawing part, doing time bound mock papers are very important and is the key to getting over your exam fear and it will also help you in handling your time. 
That's exactly how we train students at Think Institute with regular and structured mock tests that stimulate the real exam experience. For free mock papers, you can WhatsApp us at 8086-111-226. Third is learn to handle negative marking. Attempt only those questions that you are completely confident about. During the mock exams, train yourselves on how to dodge the negative marking consciously. Fourth one is practice one drawing daily. The rendering questions take up a lot of your time during the exam and most of the students find it difficult to complete in time with the required detailing. So when it comes to the second drawing questions, generally it is either scenery, composition or in 2025 it was 3D sculpture. So keep your picture dictionary ready and build a library of objects, perspectives and compositions to help you draw faster and more accurately under time pressure. Tip 5. Do not completely ignore mathematics. Pick the topics that you are comfortable with and work on it. Because attending maths will give you some sure short marks as unlike aptitude, maths answers are definite. So I hope these tips are helpful for you for your JE paper 2 preparations and hope you have a clearer understanding of the JE BIAC exam pattern now. So if you have any further doubts about the exam, colleges or the counselling and allotment processes, feel free to drop them below in the comments. So if you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and stay updated with more content on architecture and design entrance exams. Thanks for watching and see you in another video.